skills. Developed in the micro-teaching clinic of the School of Education at Stanford University. An introduction to micro-teaching. Dr. Kevin A. Ryan, Dr. James M. Cooper, Dr. Dwight W. Allen, and Dr. Robert N. Bush. There has traditionally been a gap between formal teacher education and actual teaching. The gap has been one of realistic training. Unlike most professions, the teaching profession has not provided its practitioners with opportunities for safe training, safe experimentation, and safe practice. Law students have their moot courts. Pilots, their linked trainers medical students, their cadavers. In those professions, the denial of such non-academic training experiences would be unthinkable. But in teaching, the sad fact is that the opportunities for both in-service and pre-service realistic training have been next to nil. For many years at Stanford University, teaching candidates had supplemented their academic studies with work in nearby schools as teacher aides. This experience was often found to be unsatisfactory. The training gap was only partly filled. The experience was basically one of mere observation. Sure, the master teacher would often give the aide a chance to teach, and the student suffered for it. It was like letting the pilot trainee, after extensive classroom work and after observing an experienced pilot, take over the controls with passengers aboard. What was needed was a realistic training experience analogous to those used in other professions. Micro-teaching was developed over the years in response to this need. What micro-teaching has provided is a safe but realistic training situation for teachers, both in-service and pre-service. Micro-teaching is real teaching, but at the same time it is constructed teaching. It is designed so that teachers can concentrate on the mastery of specific teaching skills in a low-risk situation. The students don't suffer for it because it's not part of their regular curriculum. And the teachers, free to experiment with different techniques, increase their range of classroom skills. Micro-teaching can be thought of as an approach or as a concept. We can describe a micro-teaching situation for you, but we cannot prescribe one. Hence, there are almost no unbreakable rules in micro-teaching. Let's look at a typical micro-teaching session. This teacher is conducting an English lesson on the social origins of language. Her performance is being recorded on videotape. This videotape record will later be used in the critique of the lesson. 
second way being, old words take on a new meaning. Now, I'll just ask you if you can think of any, any examples of words which had an older meaning, uh, but which um, are suddenly used in a new way. The spelling is kept the same, the word is kept the same, but it, it begins to mean a new thing. Mark? Uh, maybe something like peel. Like peel? Yeah, like on a fruit. And then the, the new meaning is something like peel out on a car. Or something. Okay, well, peel. it would, no. in a way, it would have another word added to it. Yeah. But you could, uh, perhaps you could use yeah. peel just even without the out and have it have a slang meaning. All right, can uh, anyone think of another? Carlos, do you have another example? Bones. Bones? Okay, bones, the old definition being the bones in your body. Kathy, what would you, or, yeah, Kathy, what would you think the slang definition of it is? I never heard of that before. You never heard of it? You just, no. well, you know about the bones in your body, yes. but not the other. Uh, do you know, Beth? Mm -mm. Well, Carlos, maybe you'll have to define it for us. Money. Money? Uh -huh. Bones is a slang word for money. Paper bills. Okay. Very good. I, I might make the point then that this kind of illustrates a danger of slang. That is, uh, it's got an old meaning that we all know about, but it can take on a new meaning, and yet maybe everybody doesn't know what that new meaning is. The lesson she is teaching is a genuine lesson. It is a short one, typically five minutes. The students she is teaching are real students, although they are not part of her regular class. Usually, four students are used. But the focus of her attention and the supervisor's attention is on the specific skill that she is practicing. In this case, higher order questions. So, micro-teaching is genuine teaching, but it is also constructed teaching. And when the teacher has finished the lesson, she will participate in a critique with her supervisor. The subject of the critique will be the use of that particular skill she is practicing. And that first part was really coming along well toward the end. The kids were really beginning to, to dig and look, look, let's take it on some more and see, see how you handle the second part now. I just ask you if you can think of any any examples of words which had an older meaning, uh, but which um, are suddenly used in a new way. Spelling is kept the same, the word is kept the same, but it, it begins to mean a new thing. Mark. Uh, maybe like peel. Like peel? Yeah, like on a fruit. The new meaning. Okay, if you if you. There, there were time limits here, and, and I can understand why you choose one way. If you had plenty of time, what, what other ways could you have gone about uh, evoking the responses from these kids to, to lead them to that category? To the second category, mm -hmm. did I? Mm -hmm. um, well, I guess, especially that particular one where my examples, the examples were slang examples, I probably could have gotten to it by just asking them if they ever made up words themselves, you know, if they were the cause of words coming into the language. Mm -hmm. And um, perhaps kind of help them along with, you know, in your particular group at school or um, in your particular, do you have, if you have a particular hobby and other people who do it with you, do you make up words of your own? And I think they might have arrived at it there. Have you, have uh, you ever had asked kids a question and, and gotten that? That great vacant stare, yes. you know. Okay, well, what, what if what if they'd done that to you? Well, um, okay, then I guess I could have actually given them examples of various slang words, or, or could have said, "All right, can you give me some slang words now?" From what she learns during this critique, the teacher will decide upon whatever changes she wants to improve her use of that skill. After taking time to incorporate these changes into her lesson plan, she will reteach the lesson, which will again be analyzed. The process can be repeated as often as necessary and altered to fit special circumstances. A key advantage to the micro-teaching approach is that it allows for immediate application of feedback, that is, the information the teacher gains during the critique. We suggest that feedback from several sources be used. 
One source of feedback is the supervisor. He may be anyone qualified to guide the teacher in a critique of the lesson. He may or may not be known to the teacher. He may be a member of the institution conducting the clinic, or he may be employed specifically for micro-teaching supervision. A second source of feedback is an audio or video tape recording of the teacher's performance. Videotape equipment is not essential to an effective micro-teaching clinic, but it is a most valuable tool, and we urge its use when and where possible. Videotape assists the supervisor in analyzing the performance and in communicating his analysis to the teacher. Videotape allows the teacher to see herself teaching. The value of this in promoting self-evaluation and self-improvement is enormous. Third, we suggest the use of feedback from colleagues. They may be fellow participants in the clinic. Besides providing the teacher with additional feedback, the colleagues themselves learn by observing the session. A fourth source of feedback is the students. Student feedback is potentially quite rich. It has been used before, but almost always in unproductive ways. Research has shown that student feedback, when intelligently channeled, is highly reliable. Finally, the teacher herself is a source of feedback. The self-critique is central in the micro-teaching approach. We want the teacher to learn how to evaluate her own performance by comparing her evaluation with those of her supervisor, her colleagues, and the students. She will gain the perspective necessary for self-evaluation. These, then, are the five sources of available feedback. They have a common quality. They focus on the specific skill being practiced. The supervisor does not evaluate the lesson as a whole. He restricts his critique to the specific skill under consideration. The students are not just asked, how did you like the lesson? But they are asked questions designed to elicit information relevant to the skill being practiced. Micro-teaching increases useful information while decreasing irrelevant information. And since the teacher can, shortly after their critique, apply this information to a reteach lesson, maximum immediate use of this feedback is made. We have developed this micro-teaching package around a set of skill clusters. Each skill cluster consists of several related teaching skills. These teaching skills have been found to be basic to effective teaching. We have selected what we feel are the five most basic clusters of skills and have made model films demonstrating the use of each skill in the clusters. Lights, please. For example, one of the skills included in the cluster of presentation skills is the skill of using examples. In this model film, note how the teacher creates and maintains student interest by effective use of this skill. Okay, can you think of another example of a crustacean? Melissa? A crab. A crab. Let's see if this crab we have here also fits our list of characteristics. Does crab live in water? Yes. Mm-hmm. Do they have hard shells? Yes. Yeah. Let's hit this one, see how hard this one is. Yeah, this hard shell is pretty much like an armored tank. The armor protects the soldier inside the tank from bullets and so on. This hard shell protects the tinder body of the crab inside. How about the number of legs? Two, four, six, eight. And pinchers. You know, these pinchers are a little different from that of the lobster, but yet they're pretty obviously pinchers. Huh? Another cluster of skills is what we call creating student involvement. One of the skills in this cluster is stimulus variation. Note here how the teacher achieves student involvement by varying the stimuli she presents the students. The monkey um, is on all fours, and when the uh, ape is in the trees, it just swings on its arms and the monkey's arms are smaller than the apes are. The monkey's probably aren't used as much. 
The monkey has toes on all four feet, and they look like fingers. The monkey is smaller. Okay, you think you're ready to come to some sort of a decision? Mm -hmm. Not okay. Let's take the pictures and put them up here. The monkey and the ape. Now, Sandy, which one did you decide would probably evolve from? The apes. The apes. All right, John. The apes. The apes. Taya. The apes. All right, the apes. Um, you all gave quite a few good reasons for thinking this. One more excerpt we would like to show you is taken from the skill cluster we call Increasing Student Participation. This film models the use of silence and nonverbal cues. Note here how the teacher, using no verbal cues, gets his students to respond and keeps the discussion going. Well, I don't think that censorship on the nation level, it's more or less, I don't think it's going to cause a revolution, really. But I think that it's necessary to withhold information about um, big offenses, offenses that are taking place. Yeah, well, that, it is censored. That is censored, because, I mean, yeah. they, they tell you about it, but they don't tell you what it is, where it is, or how it is. Well, I think censorship is kind of a form of publicity. I mean, well, if you, if you like, see, oh, this movie is for adults only, you're going to want to see it, because you know, well, it must be just for adults only, so I'm going to see that one. You know, <laughs> it'll be good. And this will make, you know, everybody want to see it. There isn't too much of that anymore, though, just adults-only movies. It's mostly just recommended for adults only, which will get kids to go see it, too. Well, it, it, it is pretty easy to obtain uh, pornographic literature. Uh. Lights, please. There are five skill clusters. Presentation skills, creating student involvement, increasing student participation. The fourth skill cluster is called questioning skills. The fifth cluster we call response repertoire, a series of response skills aimed at helping teachers learn to vary their ways of responding to students. Each cluster contains precise detailed written descriptions of the skills. Written examples of the skills are also included, as are transcripts of each model film. There are also directions for practicing the skills on a dry run basis using skill drill sheets designed for that purpose. There are training protocols in which ways to learn the skills are suggested. And there are evaluation sheets designed for use by the teacher, the students, and the supervisor. Finally, there is an instructor's manual which gives our perspective on how the materials we've provided might most effectively be used. The manual also includes information on how to organize and conduct a micro-teaching clinic. It is very important that these materials not be viewed as fixed. This is an open-ended package. We have considerable evidence that as teachers learn to use these skills, they become more comfortable, more varied, more imaginative. We know that the students like the teaching better. We have favorable judgments from professional teachers who've participated in micro-teaching. But micro-teaching can be adapted to additional purposes as well, such as curriculum development, team teaching, research, and diagnosis. But these skills, basic to effective teaching, are ideally suited to the micro-teaching situation. We want teachers to develop a repertoire of skills. That is, we want to provide the teacher with a greater range of alternatives. The more alternatives a teacher has available, the more effective the teacher will be. Professional decision-making, which occurs every day in the classroom, becomes a more meaningful process only if there are alternatives from which to choose. Micro-teaching provides the controlled but realistic training situation necessary to the development of the basic teaching skills needed 
for the possibility of decision-making alternatives.